Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is another video in my series of videos about analog electronics. And in this video, I'm going to talk about an essential piece of equipment that you'll need to use when working with analog electronics, and that is the oscilloscope. Um, so basically, what an oscilloscope is, is a device that allows you to see a plot of voltage over time. And you can get oscilloscopes with uh, typically two or four channels. Uh, right here, this is a two-channel one. Uh, you can, I've got something coming into both channels right now, and it has another uh, BNC jack for an external trigger. This one right here is a four-channel oscilloscope. And um, so basically, you've got your four channels, and the external trigger thing is on the back. And here I've got a, another two-channel oscilloscope. Um, this one needs a computer. All right, so let's look at the basic controls that you'll need when working with an oscilloscope that you'll need to understand. All right. So I have the oscilloscope here, and uh, the main controls, actually, I'll, let me explain a little bit about the screen first. Uh, all oscilloscopes will have a graph of uh, amplitude versus time. Uh, not all of them will have a menu like this. Uh, really old ones typically won't. Uh, but you have to get pretty old. This thing's fairly ancient and it even has an on-screen display. Um, you'll have an indicator of how many volts per division you're seeing. And uh, I don't know if, yeah, you can see this in the video. Uh, each one of these little dotted lines is a division. And so uh, this waveform here, which I'm not at the right angle to very well see, it uh, goes one, two, three, four divisions at two volts, which would make it eight volts from peak to peak. Uh, some oscilloscopes, mostly newer ones, will show you where the ground level is, so where zero volts is. In this case, I have a little one over here, which I'm not sure if you can see but uh, it's indicating where the ground level is with a little arrow. Um, let's see, what else can I say? Oh, uh, uh, time per division is always shown as well. And that uh, says, this right now it's saying 250 microseconds per division. So one, well, I just can't see the lines, the angle that I'm at right now. but. Uh, Anyway, each, each uh, line in that graph paper that you're seeing on the screen is 200, represents 250 microseconds. Um, so let's look at the controls that you'll typically use when working with an oscilloscope. Uh, right here is channel 1. Here is channel 2. In a line up from channel 1, you'll usually have uh, a control that allows you to adjust the volts per division. So as I change this here, you can see that the waveform is getting taller and shorter. Um, and this is your, uh, this smaller knob, which is typically above the big knob, allows you to adjust the position on the screen vertically. So here I'm adjusting that up and down. Uh, let's see, that, uh, that does it for this video. I'll get into the more advanced features in the next video. Uh, next thing we're going to look at is your time per division knob. So if I adjust this one here, it allows me to zoom in and out horizontally, uh, or essentially look at smaller and larger amounts of time. So. Uh, right here, it's telling me 250 microseconds. If I switch it again, it's 100 microseconds per division now. Um, not Actually, all, all oscilloscopes will allow you to do it. This one's doing it a little bit nicer than one like this would. Um, I can also adjust uh, 
this one horizontally. If I want to line something up with a particular line in the, um, the graph paper, then I can. Um, this is a digital oscilloscope, so it has a bit of a memory. Um, we'll get into the trigger in a moment, but the trigger's happening, happening right here. On this guy, the trigger always happens over here, uh, though I might be wrong. I haven't used this one in a little while, uh, like a year. Um, okay. Um, no, I'm going to get that next menu. All right, uh, triggering is another big thing that you need to know in uh, when working with a oscilloscope. And basically, uh, triggering is what um, your trigger is where the oscilloscope decides to start showing the waveform. In this case, I'm triggering, let me get into my trigger menu here, I'm triggering on an edge, and I'm specifically uh, triggering on a rising edge, and uh, my source is channel 1. Alright, so here I have a rising edge, I'm triggering on it at this point here. If I go over horizontally, where these two cross, that waveform happens to be. So I can adjust this up and down. If I adjust my trigger to you know this level here, then now it's still triggering at this point, but at this level. If I bring it up even farther past the waveform, it just doesn't know what to do. And this would be what you'd see if it's not, uh, it just doesn't know what to trigger on. Um, so we'll just move that back down. Uh, I could set my source to be channel 2, or I could set it to be my external trigger. Um, uh, I could make it so it's a, a falling edge instead of a rising edge. So here now it's sinking down at the point where these two lines intersect. Uh, other types of triggers are uh, video. Um, in this case, we're not going to really see that feature. Basically, what that is, is if you are um, looking at an NTSC or uh, PAL or maybe CCAM uh, video signal, which are sort of older signals that uh, people used before HDTV, uh, you can trigger on those. And it's kind of nice. You can look at whatever line um, might be going over your head if you're not familiar with video terminology, but you can look at uh, specific lines in the video, uh, which is nice. Say you're trying to decode uh, closed captioning or uh, the Vitsi timecode, you can use that. Uh, it's very handy. Um, and then pulse, I can trigger on a pulse that might be a rising edge pulse, and it might be need to be of a certain width. Um, things like that. Typically, you're going to going to use uh, edge. So that's the most common one that you're going to do. Um, really quick one, let's say your settings are all messed up and you just don't know uh, what to do. Push the auto set button on most of the newer oscilloscopes and it will go ahead and find your signals and put them both, or, you know, or put however many you have on screen. So in this case I have a uh, sine wave coming in on uh, channel 1 and on channel 2 I have a, uh, a sweep or a, I mean a ramp and actually I'll show you something on uh, this if I switch it to my source being channel 2 now this one's nice and rock solid because it's triggering on this one on the rising edge at this point uh, these two signals are not synced up with each other um, and uh, coupling for your trigger, what that is, is DC sends all signals to your trigger. Uh, another type is, uh, where is it, AC. And what AC does is it removes the DC offset from the signal before it sends it off to the trigger menu. Uh, and this one has a few others like... Um, noise reject, it gets rid of uh, um, high, really high noisy stuff, uh, high frequency re reject, I think, 
Actually, I was reading through the manual for this last night. Um, I forget exactly what frequency it does it, uh, but I think it, I think it was uh, pretty darn low, like 10 hertz or something like that. And low frequency reject uh, again, it it doesn't look at uh, slow DC offset changes. Uh, it only looks at the fast stuff. Um, DC is typically what I'm running it on. Um, uh, basically that does it for the basic features that you'll need to know for uh, working with an oscilloscope. Uh, um, if you like this video and you'd like to see more or like to follow up on the, the second of this, take a look at my other videos at robotbrigade.com.